Hi, and welcome to our series where we answer 100 coding interview questions, but in the language of Rust. Today we're going to be using Leet Code to answer these questions. They have a section where there's 100 interview questions, and they give you an option of answering them in any language you like. Today we're looking at maximum depth of binary tree. The maximum depth is the number of nodes along the longest path from the root node down to the farthest leaf node. So this is a bit trickier than our last couple of questions. We're basically going to have to recursively go through a binary tree, check its leaves, check if it has values, and then account for that node as we move through the tree. So there is an algorithm for this. If you look at Geeks for Geeks, it's explained quite well here. Basically, if there's if the tree is empty, you return zero. Otherwise, you check the left leaf and you recursively call it using our function. Then we check the right leaf and recursively call that. And we're either going to get a value of zero or we're going to get a bigger value. Then we get, then we compare le the left side and right side to see which has the larger value and that will be our maximum depth. So you can go through this more carefully yourself and try to study this algorithm. But let's just try implement it. So here we have what's given to us. Actually, this isn't given to us, but I put this in myself because we're going to have to use max in this. We don't really want to have to be writing this out. And it's part of the standard library, so that's OK. So we have the root, which is option rc ref cell tree node. Okay, this is a lot to unpack for such a basic question. And this is where Rust becomes a little bit more complicated than other languages. So an option is explained very well in the documentation. And it's either something that contains a value or nothing and does not. So this is Rust's way of dealing with uh, nothing values. In languages like Java, you would have null pointers, but Rust doesn't have null pointers. So you're going to have to match on an option and either have something or nothing and return that. So let's just start. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, we have the reference counter, which is basically provides containers that allow the data to be shared, which is important. It's like a type of smart pointer. So it basically allows you to have multiple pointers in this case. We have reference cell, which gives you interior mutability to the data. So even though we have all these reference counters, this reference counter, we're going to have to have mutability of what's in here. And that's what ref cell allows. So let's get writing the code. So let's match on our option. So we're either going to have some or we're going to have none. And in the case of none, we're going to return zero because that's nothing. So we want not zero. So in case of some root, we're going to want to return the max value between the left and right. So we're going to recursively call our function and pass to it the root dot borrow. So we're going to have to borrow this value. Uh, so the borrowing rules are quite important. And I suggest you look up um, or try to study as best as you can ownership in Rust. So we're going to borrow and then left and then clone that. 
because this doesn't take a reference but rather takes the value so we're gonna have to clone it there is another way of doing this but this is how we're going to do it for now and we're going to do the same thing for the right side uh, hold on here um, self max depth root dot borrow dot right dot clone okay and then we're going to add plus one to whatever we get plus one is basically to account for the current node that we're on so the current root node that we're on and each time you recursively go into this function you're on a new root node which is so for example when we go into the left side the left is going to become our new root and you're always going to have to add one to that okay and if we submit run this code hopefully it works no oh, that's not good um of course i used a semicolon there didn't i Ah, and there we go, our answer is accepted. So the answer is three. So we have our root, and you can see one, two, three. That's the longest path. And we submit our answer. And there we go. Now we could have done this different, slightly differently. We could have created another function within this function that then does take a, a reference and then we wouldn't have to clone this value but I mean at the end of the day it works so that's that thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed and I hope you if you have any questions just please send them in thanks